good. Happy Wednesday morning, May 12th, 2021. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Wednesday morning edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. It's time to rise and shine and get this Wednesday off to a good start. So sit back, relax, grab that good cup of coffee, and enjoy this Wednesday morning edition of The Morning Show with Riley King, where we have a little bit of everything for you in this program. So, let's begin right now. First step. Family of Andrew Brown Jr. views more videos of Deadly Encounter. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. At Panera, we take care of dinner time. We use fresh, clean ingredients to make mouth-watering masterpieces. Order our new flatbread pizzas for dinner tonight with delivery or pickup. Only at Panera. We're home tonight, the family of Andrew Brown Jr. before the cameras just moments ago speaking out after being allowed to see more of that police body camera video this afternoon. Here's ABC's Victor Kendo. It's been nearly three weeks since Andrew Brown Jr. was shot and killed by deputies in North Carolina. Tonight, we're hearing from his family right after watching the videos they've been calling for. What we saw on that video was an unjustified killing. While the footage has not been released publicly, they say they were able to watch six videos. Five of them were body cameras. We were able to see Mr. Brown sitting in his vehicle as he was ambushed. We did not see any actions on Mr. Brown's part where he made contact with them or tried to go in their direction. The district attorney reviewed hours of video and in court two weeks ago, he said Brown hit deputies with his car. As it backs up, it does make contact with law enforcement officers. The next movement of the car is forward. It is in the direction of law enforcement and makes contact with law enforcement. It is then and only then that you hear shots. There's no way that this could be justified. There's no way possible. A judge ruled Brown's family could only watch about 20 minutes of the videos, but there's more than two hours of footage from the incident. The videos could be released publicly by the end of the month. David? All right, Victor Kendo. Victor, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stefano. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. First, vaccinations of children as young as 12 in Georgia. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Could I get the 10 piece chicken McNuggets? Wait, no, Big Mac. Hmm. Back here in this country tonight into the coronavirus reports the first kids to get the Pfizer vaccine just 24 hours after Pfizer was given emergency use authorization. Tonight, Georgia has already begun vaccinating 12 to 15 year olds at the Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta today. More than 150 million people have now received at least one dose. That's 58% of adults. And tonight, the CDC director urging young people to ask their parents for the vaccine. Here's Eva Pilgrim. Today in Georgia, the first vaccinations in children as young as 12 after that green light from the FDA. I look forward to going to camp this year because last year it got canceled. And so I'm excited to um, go there and see all my camp friends. As many as 17 million adolescents will be formally cleared to do the same after a CDC panel recommends the Pfizer vaccine tomorrow. I'm also encouraging children to ask for the vaccine. Um, I, do, I have a 16 year old myself and I can tell you he wanted to get the vaccine. He wants his life back. For many parents, relief. 
just saw it in the news last week and I started crying in the car. I'm like, oh my God, it's happening. But some parents are still hesitant about the vaccine. Just 30% in one poll say they plan to get their children vaccinated right away. 26% say they will wait and see how the vaccine is working. I just like a little bit more time, a little more data. Tonight, with more than a third of Americans now fully vaccinated, growing calls to ditch masks indoors. Parents at this North Carolina school board meeting pleading for the mask mandate to be lifted. Take the mask off our children. It's our choice as parents. It's my child, my choice. Today, Dr. Rochelle Walensky on Capitol Hill defending CDC guidelines, saying they will change as more people get vaccinated. We now have 38,000 new infections on average per day. Last May 11th, it was 24,000, and we sent a lot of kids home and camps were closed. The camp guidance is intended to get our kids to camp and allow them to stay there. This as more businesses are reopening. Three of Broadway's biggest musicals announcing they will be the first to return beginning September 14th. <laughs> Tickets now on sale for Hamilton, The Lion King, and Wicked. Broadway playing a huge role in tourism and New York City's economy, generating nearly $15 billion a year, supporting almost 100,000 jobs. And those teens will be able to get the vaccine at all the normal locations, even some schools. This, as the Biden administration is partnering with Uber and Lyft, offering free rides, trying to get to that goal of 70 percent of adults vaccinated by July 4th. David. All right, Eva Pilgrim here in New York for us. Eva, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Th OK, there you go on that video and that report. Nation feels effect of pipeline ransom attack. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Anyone's? It's Mike's. Uh, I see that, but whose is it? It's Mike's. Hey! Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here at a very busy Tuesday night. And we begin tonight with the growing concern across this country after that massive cyber attack on this country's biggest fuel pipeline from Texas all the way up to New Jersey. Tonight, the lines growing at gas stations and more than a thousand gas stations have now run out of gas. Prices at the pump already going up and the FBI already confirming that they believe a criminal gang based in Russia is to blame for this. Some of the images tonight, drivers waiting in those long lines to fill up. This is a Costco in Raleigh, North Carolina. And with increasing demand of 20% of the week, Prices now climbing. Tonight, some gas stations setting a limit on how much gas you could buy in parts of the east and the south. Some gas stations have already run dry, and experts warn panic buying is only making things worse. And tonight, American Airlines, for one, already signaling that their longer flights may require extra stops just to refuel. And just to give you an idea of the size of this pipeline, from Texas to the northeast, normally carrying 100 million gallons of fuel a day. And all of this, of course, unsettling, underscoring just how vulnerable we are to these cyber attacks. ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas leading us off tonight. Tonight, with long lines at the pump and more than a thousand stations running out of gas, the effects of the Russia-based ransomware attack are being felt up and down the East Coast. In what some Homeland Security officials are calling in a new bulletin, the most devastating ransomware attack on critical infrastructure in the U.S. to date. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm says Colonial Pipeline still has not determined when it will be safe to restart the flow. By close of business tomorrow, Colonial will be in a position to make the full restart decision. Uh, but even after that decision is made, it will take a few days to ramp up operations. This pipeline has never been shut down before. Energy analysts reporting demand for gasoline rose nearly 20% nationwide Monday compared to a week ago. Everywhere I go, it's, it's bags over the gas pumps. The 5,500-mile pipeline delivers nearly half of the fuel to the East Coast, and that includes jet fuel. Gio Benitez is at Atlanta's Hartsfield Airport, America's busiest. Some airlines are already feeling the effects. American telling us it'll have to make pit stops for fuel on some long-haul flights to Hawaii and Europe, and cancellations could be next. It's been more than four days since Colonial revealed that its systems were compromised. 
of what the FBI has identified as a gang of hackers based in Russia known as Dark Side and a brazen scheme to extort money. Cyber attacks on our nation's infrastructure are growing more sophisticated, frequent, and aggressive. According to the Department of Homeland Security, ransomware attacks targeting the U.S. are up nearly 300% this year, with hackers extorting roughly $350 million from U.S. companies and consumers. The FBI identified DarkSide last October and said the group has targeted a number of industries ranging from manufacturing to healthcare to insurance. Dark side part of a larger trend where hackers are going after bigger and bigger targets. And Pierre Thomas back with us again tonight. Pierre, this is really eye-opening just how devastating one cyber attack can be. And those images, the long line, some gas stations running out. Uh, tonight we've learned the owner of the pipeline says we might learn tomorrow when they plan to reopen the pipeline. David, this could go on days longer. Security experts have been telling us for years that many companies have not put in place the necessary firewalls and that many companies have not properly trained employees to prevent hacks. Now we see that impact, David. Peter Thomas with us again tonight. Thank you, Pierre. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Okay, and there you go on that video and that rapport. And we are going to... Switch gears now, and let's go into the weather. And here's a look at the weather across the United States for this Wednesday. As you can see, we have a little bit of rain over here in Maine and things, and some rain around Atlanta and around here. There's some rain. But otherwise, the rest of the United States looks nice and dry. Not too much activity across the rest of the United States. And that is a look at your weather for this Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everyone. And we are going to switch gears now. And we're going to talk about something exciting. Broadway shows to reopen in September. Let's take a listen to that video right now. Are your sneezes putting your friends in awkward positions? Stick with Zyrtec. Zyrtec starts working hard at hour one and works twice as hard when you take it again the next day. Zyrtec, muddle no more. We are so excited to be back outside in the fresh air, and we're also so excited for our exclusive Broadway announcement from three of the biggest hit musicals on Broadway. So let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to announce Broadway is back on Tuesday, September 14th, 2021, with Hamilton, The Lion King, and Wicked. We are joined now by stars from three Broadway blockbusters, L. Steven Taylor, who plays King Mufasa in The Lion King, Crystal Joy Brown, who plays Eliza in Hamilton, and Alexandra Billings, who plays Madame Morrible in Wicked. Thank all three of you. Thank you, all, all, all of you, for joining us this morning. And, and L. Steven, I'm going to start with you. First of all, thank you for that voice that you used <laughs> in, that, in that voiceover right there to give us this exciting message. And you performed in The Lion King for 15 years. That's over 5,000 performances. So when that curtain rises for the first time in September, what's that going to feel like? Oh, man, it's kind of indescribable. I mean, that moment already in Circle of Life is just an iconic moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from Pride Rock, I have a, a different kind of special viewpoint. So I say that my favorite thing to do is to stand there on Pride Walk and wa Rock and watch all the grown men cry. But uh, <laughs> honestly, from Rafiki's opening call, you know, uh, it's a really a, a call for the community to come together. And I feel like that's what this is symbolic of. Broadway coming back, it's really a community coming back and making New York really start to go. Yeah, and it just feels right when, when the lights are lit up on Broadway and these shows are going in. Alexandra, it's 18 weeks till showtime. I know, don't remind me. So how, how are you preparing? How are you getting ready? I Well, I'm hoping that I don't fall head over heels into the orchestra pit because, you know, we have a thing that comes <laughs> like that. I really, I, you know what I'm doing is I'm saying to myself, I'm so blessed, I'm so grateful 
and I'm so honored to be a part of telling this story that for me, just as a, as a mixed race trans woman on Broadway, that I hope, I only hope that what we can do is open a portal for dialogue, for change, not just for Broadway, but for the people that come to see us. So I'm just sitting in my gratefulness and very happy. Absolutely, we're all very happy. You know, the Broadway industry of, of Crystal is committed to providing healthy and safe you know, environment and theater for everyone based on the CDC headline, I mean, uh, guidelines, based on the New York City guidelines, but that's not the only thing they're doing. Right. Well, we've taken a lot of steps, not only to make sure that the theater is going to be safe for all of our audience members, but to make sure that our cast and crew have been uh, trained in anti-racism training, also making sure that we as a brand are pushing forward social justice. We all came to a reckoning uh, after watching George Floyd's horrifying murder and we realized that as a company, as a brand, we can come together and do some amazing work. So we created something called Pam for Progress, and we have been working to make sure that there are voting rights and that we are giving scholarships and all kinds of things to continue to show equity and inclusivity in our community. And we hope that this is the first step for Broadway to continue to do this type of work because we can make absolute change. And we are representing so many people, yeah. and they can see us. And so Broadway being accessible, Broadway being diverse and inclusive is an amazing thing for all of us. And once we're back, we'll be better than ever, and New York City can revive as well. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. And, and L. Stephen, it's happening at more than just Hamilton. It's happening at, at the Lion King as well, and other theaters. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this call for change and call for our theater spaces to be more inclusive and equitable has been going on for a long time. And now, finally, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. I know that uh, at Disney Theatrical, we've been partnering with a lot of organizations in the community, like Broadway Advocacy Coalition, Black Theater United, and Black Theater Coalition, to make sure that we're actually supporting supporting impactful systemic change so then we would come back like crystal said we come back but not only returning but returning stronger and better than we were before and alexandra the ecosystem for broadway is huge almost a hundred thousand people depend on broadway for work so they told me that in the I, green yeah, room i did not yeah, know that directly or indirectly almost a hundred thousand people so what are you looking most forward to when it comes to going back to you work? know i'll tell you when I was in the show, when I was in Wicked before this terrible thing happened, there were an enormous amount of trans youth that were getting a hold of me. And I mean 10, 11, 12-year-old children who were in the middle of a transition. And they would come to the show and stand and ask for autographs with their parents. And it was the first time they had ever seen another transgender person before in their lives. If you can imagine this, having no representation at all. So seeing yourself reflected in art for the very first time is extraordinary, both for myself and for them. Well, I'll tell you this, there will not be a dry eye in the house and tickets are on sale now. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. And we are excited to hear that Broadway will be opening up in September. Very Exciting news there, and exciting about New York reopening up again as well. And we are going to switch gears now, and let's go into entertainment news. Matt Damon reacts to Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez dating rumors. Let's take a listen to that video from Entertainment Tonight. Did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and more? So what are you waiting for? World's Strongest Man Martins Litsis to help you break down boxes? What am I gonna do to you, box? Let me break it down for you. Oh, yeah. Geico, see all the ways you could save. And what did you think? I didn't, I, uh... That's a fascinating story. <laughs> All right, we, All we right. let him off the hook. I, it's true. <laughs> I, I love them both. I hope it's true. That would be awesome. Benefer, the sequel Matt Damon is down to see. That got me really excited. During an appearance on the Today Show Tuesday, the Oscar winner weighed in on the rumors that his close pal Ben Affleck may be back together with his ex fiancee Jennifer Lopez. 
Chatter that only got louder after the two were spotted together over the weekend at a luxury resort in Montana following JLo's recent split from her fiance, Alex Rodriguez. Before we get to the movie, which looks <laughs> incredible, we need to talk about something. Yeah, very important topic. Your friend, Ben okay. Affleck. And, and a little thing we call Benifer. Um, how do you like them apples? <laughs> There's not enough liquor in the world for you to get me to say something about that. Matt, who virtually joined the show live from Australia, where he's promoting his new movie, Stillwater, said the rumors that Ben and Jen are back on is news to him. Did the news make it to Australia? How did you even know that, that Benifer was a thing again? Possibly. Maybe. I is just it? heard you guys. I was sitting here waiting to come on TV. It's the first thing I, it's the first time I heard about it. But Matt, he says he's totally on Team Benifer. That's a fascinating story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, All right. let him up. I, hope it's true. Been... <laughs> I, I love them both. I hope it's true. That would be awesome. Of course, Ben and Jen, who starred together in 2003's Geely. I'm sorry. Do we know each other? Not yet. And 2004's Jersey Girl. Lady, I ask you, please, to use your own brush, okay? Can you just not use my brush? Don't start, Ollie. Got engaged in 2002, postponed their wedding in 2003, and ultimately broke up in 2004. It's an added bonus to find somebody, you know, that was such a good friend. Thought to myself, this person would be my friend, you know, and you don't find that every day either. So uh, it, it's a very special thing for both of us. A source previously told E.T. that the two have a good time when they're hanging out and things have been, quote, easy, fun, and exciting between them. Adding, quote, they've stayed in touch over the years, so the two of them reconnecting isn't a huge surprise to their friends. Ben is protective over J.Lo, and they're trying to be as low-key as possible. I just, uh, yeah, I just try to keep it together. But back to Matt. You know, Ben's like the biggest A-list director in Hollywood now. During the interview, the A-lister also shared his thoughts on the controversy surrounding the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and the lack of diversity among its members. The HFPA is something that, that uh, has been around since I, I kind of came in, and, and um, they're kind of a unique and eccentric group, and, and um, I don't know what to say about that, you know. The HFPA has been facing backlash since an investigation by the Los Angeles Times in February revealed that the organization's 87-member group of international journalists currently has no black members. Ahead of the 2021 Golden Globes, the award show put on by the HFPA, they vowed in a statement to, quote, bring in black members as well as members from other underrepresented backgrounds, adding that they would, quote, immediately work to implement an action plan to achieve that goal ASAP. Well, on Monday, E.T. confirmed that Tom Cruise returned his three Golden Globe trophies as a sign of protest, while the organization works to figure out new diversity and inclusion initiatives. And NBC announced that they were dropping the award show from airing on the network in 2022, saying in a statement to E.T., quote, We continue to believe that the HFPA is committed to meaningful reform. However, change of this magnitude takes time and work, and we feel strongly that the HFPA needs time to do it right. The HFPA released a statement after the news broke Monday and vowed to implement transformational changes as quickly and thoughtfully as possible. If they go away, um, you know, I, I don't think anybody's really gonna gonna lament that. I, I, I don't think the world needs to mourn the death of, a, of an award show. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this Wednesday morning edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. Thank you for joining us for this Wednesday edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, everyone. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of The Morning Show with Riley King. And see you back here later on today with more news coverage. Goodbye, everyone.